so we've got pretty much all the other stuff done. Uh, right now I'm going to get some of the electrical hooked up. Um, running the, the wires to and fro is going to be kind of time consuming. In a compact area when everything's close together, you really don't need a lot of wire. There's excessive amounts of everything. Like for example, this comm cable was like 10 feet long. Um, I only need it to be this long, so I cut it and crimped it. Right now I'm hooking up the shore power in is now connected. Um, input, yeah, so I'm going to set up the output. Everything else is tightened down. I've got the sensors ready to run for the battery temperature and the voltage sensor. Then I'm going to run power to my fuse block and that's when I start hooking all of the little things up. This has already been working. It's charging the battery. The battery is at 100% right now. This also works, although I haven't tested it yet. Once I have these connected, I'll be able to see if it charges when I plug in the van or supplies power when I turn on the inverter. I've mounted the communication hub and the Bluetooth to the side of this, just using like hot glue gun. If it gets really hot, it might fall, but that hot glue gun glue is pretty stable, pretty robust and good for pretty hot situations. And yeah, now it's just cable management, cord management, and trying to make everything look. And you have to do the fridge pretty. yet? The fridge, yeah, that's once this is done. Right, I got you. Yeah, and then I'll have all of the individual stuff set up on there, and I'll start running all of the individual runs and switches. We have to find those, or I'm gonna have to order new ones. We had custom push button ring light up pretty little switches, but we don't know where they are. We can't find them. Eric put them into safekeeping and now I can't find where that safekeeping, safekeeping is. And they're now kept safely somewhere I don't know or have access to. So yeah, I'm going to continue on my way and hopefully we can get some of this electrical wrapped up. We're still waiting on the uh, upholstery. When that comes, I'd like to have this all wrapped up and the van pretty much fully functional. So uh, I'm going to get to it. Okay, so now we're gonna test this, plugging it in to make sure my connections are connected and everything that is right. I'm gonna take the camera, I'm gonna get Marilyn to go and plug in the van. It's on uh, wide ones, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm just plugging in shore power? Yeah, yeah. With that uh, yeah. Just so you can see, don't plug it in yet, oh. but. I need to, I want to watch, see what happens on the screen when that does. Okay, go ahead. Hundred and twenty one volts input. I don't know what that means. Sixty hertz. Battery 13.8 output. Well, it appears to be working, AC charge. So I'd say that's successful. We'll leave it plugged in overnight just to see what happens. I can plug into the system and check it too. But I'm gonna get to the rest of this electrical and uh, hopefully we can get this done tonight.
So the stripes are negative. What color usually denotes positive and negative? Red and black. Neg black is negative? Yeah, but um, that can even change quite a bit. So that would, blue would be negative? Blue is nothing. Blue is the oh. size for the, oh, I see. for the wire. Blue just tells you that it's for a certain size gauge. Yellow is larger, blue is middle, and then red mm -hmm. is small. Well, today has been a day of electrical. It has been a non-stop gong show, which electrical always is. So try not to get hard on yourself if you're doing your own. It will be difficult, you'll get things wrong. And the best advice is to just uh, be careful, check polarity before you hook something up. And uh, if you get it wrong, just think it through and start again. So one of the problems we had where we were going to put these buttons up in this panel here, but this panel is 5 eighths thick and the threads on this only go to about half an inch. So there's no room for us to thread on the other side. We did think about maybe gluing them in place, but we didn't like that idea. So what I did is I made this aluminum plate, which will sit up inside here and mount inside the cabinet so it's out of sight. One of the things Marilyn was complaining about was that she liked how this was totally clean, nothing interrupted it. Like the outside um, of the cabinets. Yeah, yeah, the outside of the cabinets. I mean, it's not clean right now because yeah. the cabinets are gone. Mm -hmm. But but if we had drilled holes, then there's something in the cabinets. And so she kind of got her way with this, mainly because we didn't have any other option. Really what happens here is we've got hooked up so we have ambient lighting. When you turn that on, we're going to have some trim lights too. So it's enough that in the middle of the night, if you need to turn on a bit of a night light, this serves that purpose. You can turn it off just by hitting that again. I'm probably going to add a dimmer to it just so we can turn it down. Um, Although it'll be inside a cabinet anyway. So. Well, but the other ambient lights won't be. They'll be outside. Gotcha. But like we have the fridge. The fridge is working right now. We have USB. USB is hooked up and working. This is the inverter. There you can hear it powering up. Takes forever. Question, why when you press them individually, don't they light up? Because most of the time we don't want them lit. Gotcha, I'm just wondering. Um, but we can do that. I mean, it just requires more wiring. That's fine, yeah. Yeah. Um, How does it turn on all, like when you had them all on? Oh, that's, that's just sad. the ambient light. So yeah, gotcha. if you want that on, you can leave it on. Then this is gonna be the lights, which we're actually just hooking up now. That was a bit of a gong show and a, and a huge risk. Marilyn was not ready to do this, mm -hmm. but I persisted yeah. <laughs> and uh, here we have it. So mm -hmm. what we've done is we have these, they're about to... Hold on, hold on. Um... Oh, Jesus. Go. They're two inch diameter pot lights and they're really quite shallow. They're only about maybe eight or nine millimeters high. So we were unsure how the sunroof was going to affect. That's open. Oh, that's open. I was like, what? That's stuck. I panicked for a minute, thought maybe we messed up. I know, up. I told you before you wrecked something. But the sunroof is open, so we can't slide this. But anyways, we wanted to make sure that this cover didn't get, it didn't interfere with the lights. And so we took the risk, we drilled one, popped it in, and sure enough, lots of room. It flows well, nothing is interrupted. And so the beauty of this is, it's like we can just reach over here. I don't know if you can see. It's right here, right above my thumb. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's just not wanting to focus because it's so dark. But I can see it, yeah. Yeah, we can get it later too. So these now pop up. Then we had to run the wires 
to the very back lip. I undid these two plastic uh, plugs that hold the roof in place, pulled it down a little bit, and we used a coat hanger to run the wires back, had them dangling out here, and then we were trying to run them into this compartment. There's a little hole there, and we tried getting it through there, couldn't get it there, something impeding it there. I don't know what it is. So what we did is we just cut a little hole a little further over, put the coat hanger over to there, pulled the wires that way, snugged them up nice and snug up there, and now I'm about to crimp them, put on the end connector, attach it to the button, and then watch them come on in all their glorious brightness. This is gonna be the culmination and the end of an arduous day of getting all of the electrical hooked up. But we'll give you a tour of that here as soon as we finish hooking this up, just so you can kind of see what we've done. Measure once, cut twice, as they always say. Now, which one is You said that wrong way, or on purpose? Yeah. All I do need to do is see which one's positive and which one's negative. Um, I need my blue meter. One thing I don't know, these are marked. I think I know which one is negative, but I also don't want to hook it up to 12 volts and have it be wrong and then blow these out. So I'm using the diode checker on my meter that comes in handy for moments like this where you really want to be sure. It's not reading. telling me. Okay, so I'm cheating. The diode uh, tester wasn't reading one way or the other, which might mean that these have a protection circuit that makes it so you can't reverse polarity. But this is the driver for it. So if I hook this up to 12 volts, I can come to these pins and see which one's positive and negative. And I actually had to do that last year when I was putting together Marianne's van. So I'm gonna do that this time as well. Now I need to find 12 volts. Yeah, okay, well that's right. So positive and negative. Hold on a second. So positive is on the right, negative is on the left. Positive is on the right, negative is on the left. Yeah, so that, that's what I thought. The one with the big bar on it is negative. So we're going to tie the two negatives together because we want these lights to work together. That means I need to strip. Ouch. Ow, ow, ow. Somehow I stabbed my toe with that. You have to shrink grab it? Yep. Let's roll what color red. Right? We've also color coded these as well so that uh, if someone has to do troubleshooting in the future who isn't me, they'll be able to do it without having to uh, guess too much. Work too hard to figure it out. Oh, shoot. What? Well, I've got to get back to the ground. Um, so I just realized I made an error. I was getting ready to crimp both of these to go in here, but only the positive does. Um, it's been a long day. So I'm actually gonna cut this one off, restrip it, and take this to ground because everything grounds to the body in our van. So I'm gonna use extra long because I want to double them up. 
because I don't have fine enough, large enough loops for this. So I'm gonna first twist these all together and then I'm gonna fold them over three times. One, two, three. Then this blue should be enough to bite on to it. It's probably a little too dark up here for you to see the ground, but it's just a riv nut with a large bolt in it. As you can see there, I've already got another ground for the fridge on here as well. Or sorry, that's actually a ground for the lights on that, the ambient lights. So now that our ground is grounded, our lights are going to go right here. Oh, Get actually, the shrink I wrap. need to shrink this first. Where are the needle nose pliers? I think they went back. Do you need them? Well, I don't know. If I tried doing these without them, that's when I bent that one. Should I get them? Over there. And... Lo and behold, we have lights. Do that and again? You can see how bad I'm sweating. Well, that slick cat casts a lot of light. Way better than we had in our last van. We just used kind of this one, the van door light. It's uh, functional, but uh, leaves a little bit to be desired. So what we will have to do is add a dimmer when we finally figure out a solution for where we're going to put these long term. We'll have a dimmer knob so we can also turn these down. But I think that wraps up today. I think I'm going to put the cabinets back tomorrow. So we're just going to wrap up and leave it the way it is. Then in the light, we can shoot some more of this. So what you saw while we were talking, we had B-roll for. It's like 9.30? At least. Time to go in, I think. Yep. We have tomorrow's Friday? Yep. And yeah, Friday to wrap up the other stuff, get the cabinets in. Hopefully Saturday the cabinet guy can finish edge taping the last few remaining things. Upholstery's coming on um, Saturday. And upholstery, they said Saturday, I'm going to hold them to it. Yeah. We'll be like parked out the back of their shop, itching, waiting. For all intents and purposes, this is now as functional as our last van, minus the water. That's the only thing that's missing. And it's not that we're not putting it in, we just won't get to it this trip. Yeah, yeah that's going to be a fall project. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, nice seeing you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't smash the like button, just click it if you think this is enjoyable. Marilyn hates it when people say, smash that like button. Are you done? No, <laughs> just getting started. You're on. Finally.